kick-stepping musical genius, <laughs> <laughs> Darren Cochran, is now here to discuss some of his favorites. Yeah. Now, I, I, I led with ki uh, kick-stepping because of your kid and play roots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, old Very school nice. 90s hip-hop. Yeah, for sure. Well, somebody who's not into 90s hip-hop, but from the old, grand old Opry, Blake Shelton. Tell us about him and what he's going to be releasing this week. Yes, today uh, Blake Shelton has a new album out based on a true story. Country artist Blake Shelton. A lot of people will recognize him from The Voice. He's going into his fourth season on the show. He's going to be the upcoming co-host of the American Music Awards on April 7th. Uh, his first single, Sure Be Cool If You Did. Uh, the album, new album he has out now is kind of a lighter album. Um, not actually based on, on true stories, but it also features a song called uh, Granddaddy's Gun, which is a cover of Red Atkins, which Aaron Lewis from Stained also covered. So it's a lighter album, it's a fun album, and it's uh, it should be a pretty good album. Do you think that he seems new now because, I mean, he's been in the business for over 10 years, Definitely, right? Definitely, yeah. Do you think he's new now because he's so interactive with BlakeShelton.com? Exactly, yeah. If you go to BlakeShelton.com, you can actually get um, teaser videos for the new album. and It's a very interactive, really cool social media um, tied in website. But you're right, um, with his popularity, with being in the media, with his marriage to Miranda Lambert, uh, country artist as well, He's kind of in that spotlight, and a lot of people don't realize he's in his eighth album. So, you, and and what some people might not realize is Dido had yeah. a longer name yeah. before she got the Dido. real name. Dido Florian Cloud de Bonneville O'Malley Armstrong is her is her actual name. She got a new album out today, "Girl Who Got Away." Mm -hmm. um, the first single, "No Freedom." Is a, is a, it has that the, the common Dido trait when she sings, which is that softer, whispery of a voice. Um, an amazing, amazing voice to listen to. But the thing about this album is, is that it actually has more of an electronic feel. It was recorded over five years with some of those songs being recorded in a hotel room in California. Wow. <laughs> now, people might have said that about Depeche Mode when they first started I, I, back in high school. That's the reason why I had this advice. <laughs> when I first got Depeche Mode on my double cassette, this is what I would listen to it on, and I had to bring it in because I used to go for a run with this piece of business. <laughs> now is this little guy. We're just outside the Buffalo Pound Causeway on Highway 2 outside Moose Jaw where a B-train tanker spill happened overnight. Now there are two trucks that are parked right outside the scene and they're being told by officials that they're going to be waiting at least another four to five hours from now. Now overnight, as you know, the tanker spill happened, but there were no injuries. And just outside the scene, a little ways up the highway, it's still being blocked off by two separate blockades mostly because of the accident and because it's just so darn icy out here but also because of the road conditions and the drifting snow good morning we're here at martin collegiate where we've been talking about pink shirt day and what's going on to combat anti well to combat bullying and i'm here with keith Sholigan now keith you normally wear green you looking good in pink hey i try to i always tell the kids that hey i look great in pink and so should you oh good job so now why would a rider get involved with a program called beyond the hurt you're a defensive tackle you're kind of beyond the hurt on the gridiron <laughs> well on the gridiron i try to hurt people mm -hmm. but uh in the classrooms i'm trying to make a culture change um the big thing at the red cross and what we're trying to trying to do is get get kids to stand up against bullying and it's one of those things that we're trying to make a culture change and I just love to be involved in it you see yesterday at the uh, the rally that we did you know so many kids getting excited and listening to Travis's price story and it's one of those stories that you know you just don't want to uh, see happen again and that's a big thing for us and we're trying to stop that well people know you as a writer but you know you've also been to college you went four years in Central Florida in the States now how have you seen the culture change because maybe you can give some sort of wisdom or advice to people to know that it's going to change uh, uh, that's a big thing that we talk about with kids you know guys that who do who do and girls that get bullied the big thing they need to realize is once they're done high school and they get into college that the world changes and you get into the real world world and this little box of high school where popularity comes in and you're trying to fight just to have friends completely goes yeah. away and you get into college and you know everybody's there everybody seems to act normal and act with respect and everybody's there for education and that's the type of thing so they need to realize that you know what once you get out of high school that life moves on and that's a great thing the thing is getting kids through that when they're in elementary school junior high and high school is a big thing and we listen we look at the situations with Amanda Todd and this girl in uh, Nova Scotia a couple days ago um, they need to realize that hey there is there is light at the end of the tunnel and that's what we're trying to give these kids and we're also trying to get uh, you know the popular kids to know that hey they can make a change mm -hmm. and uh, that's a great thing oh, I'm glad that you ended on that because these hallways can be a scary place for some people when we come back we're going to talk to some of the students of Martin Collegiate 
Good morning. We're here in our hometown lounge uh, at STC in downtown Regina. I'm here with Kevin Holness, and he's the creator and founder of the WCP Soccer Tournament here in Regina. It's been going on and wrapping up. So how do you think things are going so far? Fantastic. Nine years in, I say it every year, bigger and better. It's a lot more momentum. Uh, we're towards the end now of the, the tournament into the semis and uh, the big show on, on Saturday. Now, I'm going to have to ask you a question about uh, the refereeing situation. There was a game where a certain player hoofed a referee because he didn't like the call. Now, what's happening with that? It's being investigated. As far as the on-field incidents that uh, led up to that incident, we're dealing with it as an organizing committee. Um, the incident involving the referee and the player from Sudan is being investigated by the authorities. Now, do you think it's because there's there's a lack of respect for referees, or why does it get to that? I think it's due to the heat of the moment. It's a very tense time in the games. We have a lot of players that, that take this more serious than people perceive it to be. And uh, emotions fly, and, and things get out of hand at times. And, man, it's an unfortunate incident. We're trying to put it behind us and deal with it in the most respective manner that we can and move forward. So you're saying it's an isolated incident and this is not something that's... Definitely. Out of mm -hmm. character, in, in the nine years that the tournament's been functioning, there's never been an incident uh, of this magnitude. Okay, and then one more question I have to ask you, because as a tournament organizer, you have to decide games, you have to keep to a tournament schedule. Penalty shootout. Are they really, are they really something that we, we need to continue on with the game, or do you think overtime would decide it? You know what differs from players to players? A lot of teams uh, will strive on the fact that it's part of their strategy to get into a situation against a more superior team to go into to penalties, and, and luck of the draw will maybe see them uh, be successful and move on. From a marketing and a promotional standpoint, hey, part of the entertainment. I think it's fantastic for the fans to see. This year we had our first uh, under 12 boys mm -hmm. division and they went into penalty kicks and it was exciting. The kids were crapping their pants, but <laughs> it was still <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> to see them. <laughs> like you put it that way because yeah. as a goalie myself, I would be crapping my pants too. Absolutely. So stay tuned because we're going to talk to some of the players and see how they think things are going.